Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to wait for the school to take their seats. It always delights me when Mr. Felix is not on schedule. I always like to announce it because he, he likes to have everything absolutely perfect. And he's late. Uh, he's also got a loud voice, doesn't he? I was the flanker and he was the second row. He was better at what he did than what I was. Fine rugby player, good friend. Ladies and gentlemen, just while I've got your attention for a second or two, and students, if you have a cell phone, do me a favor, please, and put it on silent. I don't want any heckling from the crowd, please. All right. I understand, for those of you who are alum and who know him, that Bill Ross is going to be here this afternoon. I think he may have been caught up in traffic. Mr. Patel will welcome him, but I know Bill will be here later in the day, which will be a source of pleasure for any of you who are all Brentonians. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please. Great pleasure again to welcome you here to Brentwood for our closing ceremonies. Led by University Councillors Rick Rodriguez and Kate Cool, please welcome our graduating class of 2015.
So please remain standing, or be standing, as Claire leads us in the singing of the national anthem. So, welcome to the marquee here on Campbell Common. Let me be the first to wish all the fathers out there Happy Father's Day tomorrow. <laughs> A few special welcomes this afternoon. Firstly, to the chair of the board, Old Brentonian from the class of 1964, Mr. Bruce Carlson. Board Governor and Old Brentonian from the class of 1969, Mr. Bruce Homer. Former Headmaster Bill Ross, I think, is here this afternoon. Former Head of School, Mrs. Andrea Pennells, is here. Emeritus faculty members, Mr. Jerry Pennells, Ms. Sarah Mays, Mr. Rob McLean, and Mr. John Queen are also here. Welcome also to all the family, friends, and parents who have traveled a long way to be with us this afternoon. There's approximately 1,600 people under this marquee today. Finally, a warm welcome to the students of Brentwood College School. It's been 293 days since the start of school. So congratulations, you made it to the finish line. It can never be said too often, but thank you, thank you, thank you to the faculty and staff of this great school. We're all united in our goal of creating a positive learning platform for our students so they can explore, take learning risks, and blossom into leaders of tomorrow. This group of committed and trusted adults perform their tasks with passion and pride, often seeing these students here as their own children. Please join me in thanking these remarkable people. Unfortunately, some of the faculty will not, be, be, will not be with us next year, and I'd like to acknowledge them now. Interns Mr. John Ayer, Mr. Aaron Webster, and Ms. Rebecca White leave us with a year of unique experiences and incredible relationships. Ms. Annabelle Wynn helped us through a music transition, and we wish her well. Ms. Julia Kleppel was covering for Mrs. Warner's maternity leave and moved to York House School in Vancouver, and we thank her for her two years of service. Mrs. Andrea Felix has enrolled in a master's program at the University of Victoria and will be on leave for two years. We know she will enjoy being on the other side of the desk for a while. <laughs> Finally, three faculty members. Mrs. Debbie Vogt has been a math tutor and power of positive thinking at our school for 22 years. She has the talent and empathy to take students who struggle with math through a methodical and proactive approach. She will be missed. Thank you, Debbie. For 30 years, Mr. Bruce Tate has been an exceptional teacher of physics and admiral of the pirate ship that is Rogers House. His unwavering loyalty to his house and school is impressive. 
and his teaching is legendary. Two weeks ago, we invited parents to take part in a day in the life of a Brentwood student that took place on a Friday arts afternoon. Two academic lectures were on offer, one by Mr. Collis, one by Mr. Tate. And while Mr. Collis has an exceptional gift of the gab and is most compelling, Mr. Tate's storytelling lecture was oversubscribed and we had to cap the number. Such is the reverence for Mr. Tate. Bruce, thank you for your leadership, your passion, and for your teaching. I've learned a great deal from you, and we wish you the very best in your well-earned retirement. Mr. Bruce Tate. Finally, since 1971, that's 44 years ago, Mr. John Garvey has made his presence felt on our campus. Whatever the task, Mr. Garvey was there. Sadly, this will be his final year at Brentwood. To honor him, I asked Mr. John Allpress, Deputy Head, to make a special presentation on behalf of the Board of Governors. Mr. Allpress. Are you coming back or are they just going to sing happy birthday to you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege on behalf of colleagues, students and parents to convey thanks to John Garvey for 44 years of outstanding service to Brentwood. Mr. Garvey holds the longest service record for a faculty member in Brentwood's history. Now records are set to be broken, but there is one statistic that no one else can claim. He's the only member of the Brentwood faculty to have served under all four of the first heads of school on the Brentwood campus, Brentwood Mill Bay campus. David McKenzie, Bill Ross, Andrea Pennells, and Bud Patel. Educated in London and then to Exeter University, Mr. S Mr. Garvey spoke to the students last week about some recollections from school days. What he did not tell them was he represented London schools, English universities, and British universities in soccer. Now that's not easy to do. Those are tough teams to tackle and can make. He came to Brentwood with this background at the age of 24. He was assistant house parent of Privet from 1972 to 74. He was appointed head of the math department at age 30 and assistant head of school at the age of 39, a position he's held for 29 years until the present day. At various stages, he has held many key responsibilities. Director of athletics, he organized grad, he managed discipline, he got up at 3 a.m. to supervise student departures for every major vacation. But there are several constants over that window from 1971 to 2015. There is the exceptional teacher of mathematics. That's how his colleagues view him, and that is how his students over the decades speak of his teaching. Then there's the inspirational coach. Great coaches don't just know their game, they have a feel for it. They can communicate it, they exude their love of the discipline. The athletes amongst you will know what I mean. And with all that comes the tremendous loyalty that athletes have for great coaches. Garves athletes over the decades have revered him. Be careful here that I don't wind up with the wind blowing these pages away. <laughs> here we go. And finally is the outstanding teacher. Mr. Garvey has an eye for detail. His procedural memos have guided us as a school for decades. And he leads as he teaches and coaches by example. He's provided outstanding leadership within the faculty ranks. If there's a disliked task or an unpopular shift, Garve's always the first to assign himself. 
At times, when things get a bit tense, Garf's sense of humour invariably surfaces and gets us laughing. We'll miss him. Thank you, Garf. We have an award, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm obviously not good at choreographing because I wouldn't have got you up and made you sit down. Gav's not going to sit there. He's going to sit right where he is. We have an award that we present periodically. The Hugh Stephen Award. The rubric reads simply, in recognition of extraordinary service to Brentwood. In the past 35 years, it's been awarded 14 times to three heads of school, five governors, and six teachers. It is awarded today to the 15th recipient. The Stu Stephen Award is presented to John Garvey in recognition of 44 years of exceptional teaching, inspirational coaching, and outstanding leadership. Congratulations, John. Mr. Carlson to bring greetings from the board. Mr. Carlson. Good afternoon, everyone. These uh, closing exercises and awards day are really a day of uh, fun and uh, celebration for the Brentwood family. And as uh, chair of the board, uh, I represent a group of individuals who are the senior citizens of that family, the elders of that family. And our role is really to try and try and provide some, some ideas and some sound policies to help this school to continue to function. And, uh, you know, as much as we, we discuss and we think and we analyze and we measure and we try and come, come forward with objective ideas, our work is really based on a few very simple ideas or a few very simple beliefs. And this is the beliefs in, in our staff, first of all, our staff and our teachers. Our kitchen staff, for instance, uh, who with a smile on their face today served 1,600 of you lunch in, uh, in an hour and a half. Our, uh, our maintenance staff who prepare these uh, facilities and grounds in this condition every day all year long, not just, just today. And of course our teachers who just continually amaze us with their, their commitment and their dedication to, to your children. And of course, to our students, your children, uh, our belief in them. And the belief is that, you know, a seed, well planted, nourished, looked after, and loved, will of its own accord grow to its full potential. And it seems to do that every year. So yes, part of our work is to help in, in arranging for these facilities to, to be built so that your, your children can, can excel and exceed in, in art and athletics and, and academics. But, you know, our collective hope on the board is that in time and in life they will become known for their character and their courage and, and their humility. That's our, that's our inspiration. And so today, uh, I, I want to say to the parents of our students, uh, uh, I want to express gratitude and say thank you for entrusting to us uh, your, your most prized part, valued part of your life. Um, and to the students, to all of you, we on the board wish you the absolute very best. Uh, this may seem like the end of something, but actually it's the beginning of something even bigger. Good luck and best wishes to all of you. Thank you.
this year in your program we've included information about all the school's major components and I encourage you to review these highlights. A quick glance will reveal what a remarkable year it has been. The power of Brentwood is not easily quantified. We have attempted to do this. We've crafted words, used images, and created videos to help define the Brentwood experience. None, however, are completely capable of capturing it. It's more subtle, as Mr. So said last night to the Rogers House boys. It's the little things. The power of Brentwood floats, permeates, and oozes. Whether you've been here for 44 years or been here for one year, Brentwood's magical spell quickly engulfs us all. But don't take my word for it. Let me share two perspectives. One from a 44-year veteran and the other from a one-year wonder. Last Thursday, Mr. Garvey shared his final lessons with the school, and he had three of them. Number one, respect. Mr. Garvey reminded us of Gary Gann's address to the school during his grade 11 year. As a new student, he mentioned how impressed he was at the way people held open the door for those that followed. Rather than rushing through or cutting in front of someone at Brentwood, we waited for someone else to safely pass through that door. As Mr. Garvey pointed out, that's respect. Respect for everything and for everyone. We can and all must be respectful, he said. An example of this came on May 24th. Over the course of the year, Mrs. Chung Robinson, Mackenzie House parent, and a number of other staff intensely trained for the Oak Bay Half Marathon. Many of us, including me, driving in a vehicle, notably, <laughs> would see them running up and down Mill Bay Road, training, all times of day, all types of weather conditions. I was in my nice warm vehicle. Early that Sunday morning, when they could have slept in, the Mac girls secretly organized a bus to take them to the finish line so they could cheer on their house parent. As Miss Chung Robinson came over the final crest, and she saw a sea of green. They were her girls. Tears were shed, hugs were aplenty, and that mutual respect between teachers and students that is at the heart of the Brentwood ex experience was once again revealed. Number two, fun and optimism. The joy part of our values is often overlooked. Mr. Garvey shared that having a positive attitude and being optimistic about life is a far better way to be. Despite the challenges of the day, week, month, or year, and yes, he acknowledged we all have our down moments, we must look on the bright side of the beautiful lives that we lead. Look around to see a stunning campus, amazing facilities, a caring community, and a one-of-a-kind learning experience. Brentwood, he said, it's a pretty good life. We must also have some fun, have some laughs, take part in a bit of banter. If you've been fortunate enough to attend our Thursday assemblies, there's plenty of levity amongst the honoring and messaging. Toby's speed rapping resonated. Open house videos had us rolling in the aisles most of the time. Even when Mr. McCarthy honored Mr. Tate at the same assembly, we shared a number of laughs at his no ordinary Bruce comparisons. Other memorable moments include Kara Ashler dumping two buckets of ice on me at the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. I will never forget that. <laughs> and neither will she. <laughs> staff versus student events, and I'm happy to report here at the official closing ceremonies, the staff defeated the students in every event except the one I didn't actually participate in. <laughs> Mr. Garvey did participate in that one. <laughs> Golf. And yes, and again, I'm, I'm happy slash sad to announce selfie with Patel. It will end today. Today is the last day of selfies. So if you want to get one, today's the day. It's the least trended hashtag of all time. In fact, later in the ceremony, I'm going to be standing right there and cringing, most likely, when Mr. Garvey stands at this podium and tells his jokes. Garv, be good to me. Number three, commitment, or as he puts it, get on with it. 
His message, when you say you're going to do something, then do it. When you sign up for something, then do it. When you commit to a team or an activity, you got to give it your all. Be strong. Be mentally tough. Be gritty. Yes, there's our other core value. He shared that since he was a schoolboy, he had an unblemished record of punctuality and attendance at school and at work. That's over 60 years of not being late and not being ill or absent from work. He was committed and he asked us to do the same. Mr. Garvey is proud of Tyler Pickford quietly supporting the grade eights during his spares and of Maria Fustic helping one of our grade nines with a fundraising project and of Jordan Sickerman putting in well over 90 hours of peer tutoring time this year and of Mr. Langer's fitness club affectionately known as Drew's Angels and of G1 Kim and the Academic Council's organization of this year's Careers Day and of Kevin Dada owning the northeast corner of the library <laughs> and of our faculty's willingness to do Sunday tutorials. That's commitment. He left us with three words, respect, fun, and commitment. Mr. Garvey, Brentwood will live up to your standards and I hope you remain proud of your school. Now on to the one year wonder. Last week I received a letter from one of our graduates. I'll share an abridged version of her story. It's entitled, My Story. I started to think back and I remembered how everything began, she said. I was in my car with my mom, talking about life, fight. I love to aspire, to grow, to learn, belong, succeed, and be fulfilled by what surrounds me. I knew that my first step was to find the right moment to tell my dad. I was looking at him and he was looking at me, so I decided to put the cards on the table. The answer was not a yes or a no or even a maybe, but instead he told me to get informed. I looked at over 40 boarding schools and not one could match what I was looking for. Some had amazing sports and academic programs, but the arts programs were barely planned. Others had an impressive number of students. Others had an immense campus. But I felt unsatisfied by all of them because there was always something lacking. They were not complete. I knew that if I was going to leave home for a year, it needed to be a place where I could develop and maximize what she called my human skills. I thought that it was just about time to drop the ball after hours and hours and hours of looking up schools. I could not find the right place for me. But then there was a day when I was at my previous school and my mother called me and told me, Vicki, I found the right one. The next thing I know, I'm at Brentwood College School. This was the place where I needed to be for my last year of high school. With this group of people in this place and at this time, 2014, 2015. I remember that first day like it was yesterday. And I want to say that I'm so pleased with my decision because I'm extremely happy with who I am at this time of my life. I remember when all the grade 12s from Hope House went to your home for a barbecue and you asked us, what makes Brentwood different? Many answers were given and all of them were true, but one was more relevant than the others, the Brentwood family. My 10 months living here has been made has made this state help me in an unimaginable way. I feel strong and independent, and I couldn't feel more proud of who I am. I'm extremely thankful for my family's unconditional support and love, and to Brentwood for standing by me in my never-ending journey. That was said to me by Victoria Royce, Hope House, 2015. Whether you've been here for 44 years or 10 months, Brentwood quickly penetrates your heart and your soul. Their lessons are basic, simple, and also oh Brentwood. The power of Brentwood, you see, is in the uh, majestic, isn't the majestic campus, isn't the stunning facilities, and it isn't the amazing programs. It's embedded in the relationships between people. Mr. Carlson referred to that earlier. People that respect one another. People that have fun with each other. People that commit to each other. All in the most human way. Please join me in thanking Mr. Garvey and Victoria for these wise words.
my honor now to invite Head Prefect Tyler Prick Pickford to the podium. Pardon me, it's being streamed too, it's online. Tyler is one of the 13 graduates who achieved the tripartite triple. Colors in arts, athletics, and academics. Even more impressive is Tyler's commitment to be a servant leader. He leads from the front, middle, and back. Tyler, it is an honor to serve alongside you, and I will miss you greatly next year. Ladies and gentlemen, your head prefect, Tyler Pickford. Wow, it really is windy up here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great joy and pride that I stand up here in front of you all on this beautiful day to deliver my closing speech for the year. In fact, I feel very lucky. You see, two hours from now, many of you may be growing tired of the many presentations that will follow. I have the opportunity to and you're all still. So times of the I only have so much until glares at me to step up away from the mic and get off the stage. So as my three years at Brentwood have gradually turned into the hours that remain, I find myself reflecting on all that has happened. So many good times, stressful times, joyous times, and altogether weird times characterize my Brentwood experience. I remember driving through Brentwood's gates in 2012, entering a world of opportunity through which I would have the chance to explore my interests. The reality is when I came to Brentwood, I had absolutely no idea who I was. A rower with good grades. This was about the extent of my identity. In hindsight, I'd say that I came to Brownwood with a need for some self-exploration. And that's exactly what I've done. Any of my family or friends will tell you that I go through phases. Cowboy phase, philosopher phase, bodybuilder phase, rower phase. All of these are examples of identities I've had for myself since grade 10. And one phase in particular took a lot out of me back in grade 10. You see, during the mornings when I wasn't on the water training, I studied vigorously for my SATs. Every morning at 4 a.m., my Tony Robbins alarm clock woke me up. I went downstairs to start the kettle, and for the next three hours, I listened to motivational speeches while I delved into my textbook. Now, I know what you're thinking. What 16-year-old in his right mind would do this to himself? Now, looking back, I don't really know why. I've always been a little crazy. But I do remember my rationale. You see, for a year, I was adamant on going to Harvard. It was the pillar of my future. Admittedly, this vision existed to satiate my ravenous ego, but it was well intended. You see, initially, I struggled with those long mornings, fighting the urge to sleep. But eventually, I got to the point where it was part of my daily routine. But I became a machine. All that mattered to me was pumping out hours studying. I saw it as making progress towards my goal, which I, I kind of guess it was. But looking back, I definitely say my social life suffered. In fact, I began to like books more than people. In the end, though, I became a very more disciplined person as a result. However, since then, I've recognized that in my life, I want some more balance. So in the end, I broke the routine for a variety of reasons. and will not be attending Harvard this September. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Anyway, the lesson I want to emphasize from this story is the importance of our journey as opposed to the final destination. While the cry of my 4 a.m. kettle certainly disturbed the people I lived with, it taught me two very valuable lessons. The first, sheer passion is great for gaining momentum, but be careful not to let it blind you. And the second, sleep deprivation is never sustainable. <laughs> Since grade 10, I've grown into a much more well-rounded person, and in the process I've learned a lot about myself. Today I look back at my former self with an admiration of my own overwhelming passion. Was it healthy? Probably not, but it taught me a lot about myself and gave me confidence in my abilities. For me, Brentwood has provided an environment for trial and error learning, and for me this has been an amazing opportunity. Like I mentioned earlier, I've gone through many phases, some of which I'm still immersed in. But these periods of self-exploration have taught me valuable lessons. Now sometimes the phase hasn't been right for me, while at other times I've been able to develop a new part of myself 
in the process. In the past three years, I've learned that life is always changing, very much like Bremen. In a few hours, the school will turn over a new chapter in its history. Mr. Tate and Mr. Garvey have both been mentors and inspiring members of the Bremen community for decades, and at the end of the day, they will leave the busyness of the Brentwood bubble for retirement. Well deserved, if you ask me. Furthermore, there will be changes in the flow of the student body. Grade nines advance to grade 10, and grade 10s will make their way into the senior school. At the end of the day, we, the grade 12s, will be old Brentonians, and the grade 11s will have to step in to fill our shoes. Dear grade 11s, I empathize with what you're feeling in your belly right now. The butterflies are not fun. At the end of these ceremonies, we'll have a new student executive council, and I know the school will be in good hands. But just as a cautionary note, guys, please don't burn down the school. We only have one, but I have faith in you. This is the beauty of Brownwood, though. The constant change of people coming and going, granting us new experiences, and teaching us about ourselves for better and for worse. I've learned many things since my adventure began in grade 10, and don't regret anything that has happened, except for maybe a couple of misadventures on the Millennium Trail. Anyways, my point is, that was cheeky, that as the aspects which define our Brentwood experience progress or change entirely, one thing stands true. Brentwood is a place of love. For me, it hasn't always been smooth sailing. There have been bumps and bruises along the way which have helped shape me into who I am today. Many of you will understand what I say when I say that things have gotten pretty weird sometimes. But regardless of what happens, the Brentwood family has always been there for me. T.S. Eliot once said that it's the journey, not the arrival, that matters. And this quote encompasses the essence of the Brentwood experience. I feel that I can speak on behalf of the grads when I say that our Brentwood experience has helped shape us into the people you see here today, for better or for worse, but mostly for better. So today, we, the students, owe a wholehearted thanks to the faculty and staff who have helped get us through the year. To the administration, nurses, food services, maintenance, cleaning, and laundry staff, every gear that makes Brentwood tick, we give our thanks. To our coaches, teachers, and instructors, thank you for guiding us and instilling a passion for learning in our hearts. To our house parents and mentors, who have helped guide us through the turbulent seas since we arrived in September, we thank you wholeheartedly. We thank you, parents, grandparents, family members, and donors, for providing us with the incredible opportunity to experience Brentwood, for the love and support you have given us along our journey. Finally, I would like to thank my fellow students for being the essence of Brentwood. For each and every face I look at onto today, I have a memory from some point over the past three years. It makes me truly thankful to have known all of you, and my closing advice for today is to cherish the bond you all have for each other. It is the essence of Brentwood. I would like to finish with a quote from Mark Twain. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. Thank you very much. Mr. Garvey to the microphone, Mr. Garvey. Uh, uh. Good afternoon. I would first of all like to invite Mrs. Wendy Patel to come up and present the prizes to the grade eights 
Well, doing so, I'd like to thank and congratulate her for leading and mentoring the Great Eights this year and to the wonderful work they have done. We're going to read out all of the Great Eight prizes at once, and then we'll do the 9 to 12s by department. First of all, English 8, the runner-up is Jenna Watkins. The winner is Gemma O'Malley. <laughs> Math 8, the runner-up is Larissa Grimalowski. The winner is Fiona Kelly. <laughs> Social Studies 8, the runner-up is Campbell White. The winner is Liam Mitchell. Science 8, the runner-up is Jaya Doman. The winner is Katie Singh. In French 8, the runner-up is Grady Robson. The winner is Catherine McIntyre. Innovations 8. The runner-up is Maya Jenner. The winner, Alexander Culverson. In Art 8, the runner-up is Leila Mejavon. The winner is Larissa Grimalowski. In Phys Ed 8, the runner-up is Maria Rosso. The winner is Yaya Doman. By the way, I've decided to sell my old vacuum cleaner. Well, it was just collecting dust anyway. Uh, we need all the grade eight winners to come down. Follow Mr. Fletcher for a photo. The winners of the grade eight prizes. And it, by department from following, all the gather down there. Follow Mr. Cowie. Someone figured out my computer. Now I'm gonna have to rename my dog. <laughs> Did you see those adverts recently? iPad is thin. iPad is beautiful. Now my laptop has got an eating disorder. <laughs> I'd like to invite Mr. Lawrence to come up to give the prizes for the Business and Information Technology Department. 20th Century Nine. The runner-up is Julia Schack, and the winner is Nairi Polis. <laughs> Marketing 11, the runner-up is Alejandro Godin Gonzalez. The winner is Derek Anderson. <laughs> Software engineering, two runners-up, Brooke Martin and Sophia Shipova. The winner is Ben Wong. In robotics, the runner-up is Cameron Wilmer. The winner is Linnea Monroe. Derek is from Cobble Hill. Ben is from Ho Chi Minh City. Enea is from Gabriola, Nairi is from Harriet Bay up on Quadra Island. I'm not sure if Mr. Patel likes Mr. Felix and I. 
We were out for dinner recently, and the waitress came up to Mr. Patel and said, what would you like? And he said, I'll have the steak, medium rare, please. And she said, and what about the vegetables? And he turned around to Mr. Felix and I and said, oh, they'll have chicken. <laughs> Economics, Economics 12. The runner-up is Helen Zhang. The co-winners, Emily Lawrence from Cobble Hill, Kasani Evans from Calgary. <laughs> Entrepreneurship 12. The runner-up is Kevin Luo. The winner, Emma Carr from Lanceville. Financial accounting, the runner-up is Echo Soon. The winner, Tyler Pickford from Victoria. <laughs> Design 11, the runner-up is Kyra Andrews. The winner, Bethany Woodbridge from Victoria. My wife asked me why I don't play golf with Bud Patel anymore. <laughs> I said, well, would you play with someone who lies and cheats and will do anything he can to take your money? And she said, no, certainly not. I said, neither will Bud. like to ask Mr. Wardrop to come up and present the mathematics prizes. Mr. Wardrop is obsessed with grass. He keeps plotting behind my back. <laughs> mathematics 9, the runner-up is Julia Shack, the winner from Herit Bay, Nairi Polis. Mathematics 10, the runner-up is Natalie Poon, the winner from Hong Kong, Francis Vaughan. <laughs> Precalculus Mathematics 11, the runner-up is Will Skokin, the winner from Shanghai, Nancy Ju. Foundations of Mathematics 12, the runner-up is Devon Satanovich. The winner from Banff is Ian Standish. <laughs> Arithmophobia is a phobia of number sequences. If you suffer from this debilitating disease, Please call the Arithmophobia Hotline. <laughs> it is 011-274-9938-206-743-1082. Extension 278-18365. Calculus 12. Two runners up, Scott Wheaton and Maddie Andrews. The winner from Beijing, Helen Zhang. Pre-calculus 12. The runner up is Stephanie Chung. The winner from Saskatoon, Scott Wheaton. And the Hugh Brackenbury plate for a student who has demonstrated excellence in external mathematics competitions. In memory of Hugh Brackenbury, a master teacher, a dedicated colleague, and a true gentleman. The winner from Seattle, David Chen.
My wife said my mathematical OCD was getting worse. I said, poppycock, give me an even number of examples. <laughs> now I'd like to invite Mr. Collis up to give out the English prizes. Mr. Collis does his duty in Privet House. I asked the boy in Privet House what the time was. And he said, what do you mean now? I said, no, at nine o'clock tonight. If I had a dollar for every time somebody called me stupid, I'd have four dollars and 55 cents. <laughs> English nine, the runners up, the runner up, Hannah Richards, the winner from Cobble Hill, Cara LaBelle. In English 10, two runners up, Holly Collis Hanford and Delaney Bath, the winner from Red Deer, Andrew Will. English 11, three runners up, Petra Jackson, Caitlin Wardrop, Laylee Nagdi, the winner from Duncan, Liam Brockley. English 12, the Arthur Privet Prize for Excellence. The runners-up, Rebecca Delmott, Tyler Pickford. The winner, Toby Collis Hanford. Outstanding achievement in English literature. Two runners up, Morgan Davis, Jordan Messamy. <laughs> Do you know, yesterday I found a Justin Bieber ticket nailed to a fence post out by the gate. And I looked around, there was nobody looking. So I took it. After all, you never know when you're going to need a good nail. The Judith Mason Prize for Studio Art 12. The runner-up is Christina Thurston. The winner from Grand Prairie, Evan Strasden. to call Mr. Marco Hernandez forward for the Modern Languages Prizes. French 9, the runner-up is Antera Patel, the winner from Duncan, Hannah Richards. <laughs> Beginner Spanish 9, the runner-up is Mark Wheaton, the winner from Duncan, Olivia Bass. French 10, the runner-up is Connor Wardrop, the winner from Duncan, Anna Moreira. <laughs> Spanish 10, the runner-up is Crawford Crooks, the winner, Andrew Will from Red Deer. <laughs> Mandarin 10, the runner-up is Justin Fuhr, the winner from Vancouver, Benny Jean Citrobaum. <laughs> Beginners, Mandarin 11. The runner-up was Nick Prashimov. 
The winner, Cara LaBelle from Cobble Hill. French 11, the runner-up is Nairi Polis. The winner from Salt Spring, Julia Shack. Spanish 11, the winner, Piper Heeman. I'm thinking of starting up Facebook for the first time. <laughs> but I'm going to register my name as nobody. And I'm going to click like as many times as I can. <laughs> so it will say, nobody likes it. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Somebody asked me what Mill Bay was like when I first arrived. And I said, well, it was in black and white then. <laughs> but we did get color five years later. <laughs> Social studies, Mr. Robinson. <laughs> Social studies nine. The runner-up, Camille Campbell. The winner from Salt Spring, Julia Shack. <laughs> Social Studies 10. The runner-up, Kyra Andrews. The winner, Derek Anderson from Cobble Hill. <laughs> Social Studies 11. The runner-up is Liam Brockley. The winner from Saudi Arabia, Leo Brandon. <laughs> International Relations. The runner-up is Caitlin Cormy. The winner from Mexico and Victoria, Alejandro Godin Gonzalez. <laughs> Art History 12. The runner-up, Evan Strasden. The winner from Haida Gwaii, Sarah Peerless. I knew it was time to retire when I started making the same sounds as my coffee maker. My wife calls me Spider-Man. Not because I have any special powers, I just have trouble getting out of the bathtub. <laughs> Geography 12. The runner-up is Leo Brandon, the winner from Toronto, Claire Deneuve. Human Geography 12, the runner-up, Molly McPhee Green. The winner from Fort McMurray, Maria Fustic. <laughs> Comparative Government and Politics 12, the runner-up is Natalie Lawrence Ramirez. The winner, Ji Won Kim from Duncan. Law 12, this by the way carries a scholarship from Harrison Company. The runner-up is Wyatt Tan. The winner from Toronto, Evie Angelov. <laughs> European History 12, the runner-up is Ben Watson. The winner from Whistler, Robbie Sambo. In History 12, the runner-up is Jack Hamilton Lane. The winner from Comox is Ben Watson. <laughs> World History 12, the Nicholas Prowse Award. The runner-up is Feather Dawn Floco. 
The winner is Tegan West from Cobble Hill. A few years ago, I gave some advice. We've already heard some very esoteric advice. This advice was from Homer Simpson. And it was three phrases. Cover for me. Great idea, boss. It was like that when I got here. <laughs> None of the students ever spoke about these. A couple of parents got back to me, but I keep hearing these things from my staff. Cover for me. <laughs> it was like that when I found it. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> Science. Mr. Dola. Mark Wheaton, the winner from Saudi Arabia, Mide Olatambosan. <laughs> Science 10, the runner up is Derek Anderson, the winner from Nanaimo, Nanaimo Cavi Graywall. <laughs> and while he's coming up, Science and Ethics 11, the runner-up is Sarah Rosen, the winner, Kevin Graywall. Here he is. <laughs> Biology 11, the runner-up is Natalie Poon, the winner is Stephanie Chong from Richmond. Chemistry 11, two runners up, Benjamin Wong and Joyce Yu, the winner from Recife, Brazil, Breno Chan. <laughs> Physics 11, the runner up is Breno Chan, the winner, Stephanie Chong. I think there's something going on there. <laughs> I got a phone call from somebody in my calculus class. He said, do you ever stab in pain like somebody's got a voodoo doll and they're sticking pins in it? I said, no. He said, how about now? You know, it's great for so many parents to be here. I want you to know that my parents made real sacrifices for me. Well, they were druids. And that's what they did before the Anglo-Saxons came along. <laughs> Chemistry 12. The runner-up is Helen Zhang. The winner from Grand Prairie, Kevin Dada. Geology 12, the runner-up is Sarah Peerless, the winner from Vancouver, Will Kenny. <laughs> Environmental Science 12, the runner-up is Tegan West, the winner from Canmore, Bobby Duet. Psychology 12, the runner-up is Andrea Denny Giles, the winner from Prince George, Kimmy Gilson. <laughs> Police are looking for a man who robbed the Mill Bay liquor store with scissors. They say the guy could be a real danger unless you have a rock. Bruce Tate Award for Physics 12. The runner-up is Scott Wheaton. The winner from Beijing, Helen Zhang. <laughs> Bio
Biology 12, the Jerry Pennells Prize. In honor of Jerry Pennells, a 1999 recipient of a Prime Minister's Award for Teaching Excellence. The runner-up is Jordan Sickerman, the winner from Grand Prairie, Kevin Dada. And the Andrew Rame Memorial Award for a graduate who has made a firm commitment to a career in engineering whose aptitudes and abilities include a flair for applied science and study, an engineering scholarship given by Diane Rame in memory of her son Andrew. The winner from Fort McMurray, Matt Forward. Finally, just a few words from me. They say that if in your lifetime you can influence one person and improve their lives, that your life is a success. If that's true, then teaching is the best profession in the world. So I've had many great opportunities to influence people. I'm very sorry that I failed with all these great 12s. <laughs> But really, it has been a pleasure. Thank you very much. get started with the Heads Academics Award. This is the first time that this ceremony has ever been uh, streamed to the web, so I have to say hello to my sister Pauline in the UK. Hi, Pauline. <laughs> <laughs> to receive a Heads Academic Award, a student must maintain an average of 95% or greater with a 4.5% effort average in all academic courses. Receiving this today, following people, Bryn Alexander, Derek Anderson, Jara Andrews, Maddie Andrews, Leo Brandon, Breno Chan, Stephanie Chung, Kevin Dada, Please come to the stage. <laughs> Cabby Gruel, Cara LaBelle, Tyler Pickford, Julia Shack, Jordan Sickerman, Scott Wheaton, Helen Zhang. <laughs> Just one. One quick thing that hasn't been mentioned, built and programmed her own Arduino computer that uh, managed 345 LED lights in a three-dimensional display so she could enjoy a dance party in her room every night. <laughs> well done to all these students. Heads Oats Award. Students achieve this distinction if they have achieved 95% average with a five effort 
in at least two visual arts or at the senior level in one advanced performance art. I will call them up to the stage in three groups. Bryn Alexander, Kiara Andrews, Maddie Andrews, Claire Attridge, Emily Bradbury, Emma Carr, Chris Chan, Dakara Chalamabus, Jacqueline Childs, Holly Collis Hanford. <laughs> who, who has not been inspired by Bryn, dancer, choreographer, and yearbook, a multiple arts award winner? She has led with her heart. Kiara is one of our top junior artists working in several mediums. Maddie, an outstanding, inspiring painter who has my personal thanks for her exemplary leadership this year on the Arts Council as SEC rep. Claire Attridge, an exceptional woman who's embraced all the facets of our program. Some of them are still down there tagging yeah, us over. Okay. okay, we'll go on to the next group. Group number two. Tamara Cote, Kevin Dada, Gemma Els, Gary Gann, Alejandro Ga Godan Gonzalez, Shayla Gromoski, Jack Hamilton Lane, Will Kenny, Joel Crystal, Natalie Lawrence Ramirez. <laughs> Jack is a Renaissance man winning many achievements in art. He was also in the musical, and his painting, Aleutian Forest, was selected for the school's Chrissy Collection of Contemporary Bentonian Art. Gary, of course, is recognized as an insp inspirational speaker, master hand yo-yoist. <laughs> Kevin, of course, a natural leader, crafter, visions, and model for others, an outstanding leader in debate. Natalie an outstanding commitment and passion to all of our programs in music and in debate. Shayla, shining in four performance arts. She is such an inspiration. Crystal, winner of the most promising photo award. He's been the key man in yearbook for the must have but impossible to shoot photo. Will is a lead in both this year's musical and senior acting play, Midsummer Night's Dream, a passionate performer. And the final group, number three, Nick McLean, Jacob Norman, Mide Olanomboson, Tyler Pickford, Victor Robbins, Sally C.O., Jordan Sickerman, Devin Walker, Andrew Will, Lauren Yannick, and last and certainly not least, Helen Zhang. <laughs> Nick represented Nick and Tyler both represented British Columbia at the Canadian Nationals Debate Tournament. Mide is a young man with a creative flair and dance and concert band. Jacob was winner of the Kennings Award in Creative Science and was part of our first competitive robotics team to go provincials. Victor is co-winner of the O'Born Trophy for Excellence in Technical Theater for his outstanding dedication to that program. Mr. Timekeeper Jordan Sickerman is also a 3D design prize winner and debater. And Lauren Yannick, of course, very talented and generous with her time, a gift to the dance program. Devon, winner of Outstanding Strings Ensemble Prize, captain of musical, dance musical, joint winner of the Earnshaw Trophy for the most valuable contribution to performing arts. Helen is a designing engineer who also creates on the pottery wheel. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Could the Arts Heads Award please go for your photograph, please? Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be announcing the Heads Awards in Athletics for the 2014-2015 year. To receive the Heads Athletic Award, 
A student athlete must have an outstanding athletic average over all three terms of sport, played a significant role on at least two competitive Brentwood teams, and received a minimum 4.5 effort rating in athletics. I will say that to receive this award, it is extremely challenging. We have six students in the entire school, grades nine through 12, who have qualified. When I call your name, please make your way to the stage, for Mr. Patel to receive your award. Our first award recipient in grade 10 is Kate Brower. Kate was a starter on our junior girls volleyball team, an elite player on our junior girls soccer team. She also played for our senior girls soccer team, despite being only in grade 10, and helped our girls rugby team to an undefeated season and a gold medal at the provincial championships. Well done, Kate. Our next winner in grade 12 is Hannah Colburn. Hannah was a key contributor to our senior girls volleyball team that came 11th in the province, played basketball in the second term for our senior girls team, and turned around and started for our girls rugby team that won gold at Provincials. A terrific way to end a great athletic career at Brentwood. Well done, Hannah. Our next award winner is Lauren Hansen. Lauren, also in grade 12, had the rare distinction of being an elite player and captain for both our provincial qualifying senior girls volleyball team and in the third term, she captained our senior girls soccer team. Clearly, Lauren is a tremendous athlete and according to her coach, Ms. Fogner, an even better leader. Well done. Our next recipient, another grade 12 winner, Sean Montero. Sean was an important co contributor to a very strong senior boys soccer team that won their league in the first term, then where his speed and toughness helped the boys to seventh place. Well done, Sean. Our next award winner is Nairi Paulus. Despite only being in grade nine, Nairi started on our junior girls volleyball team in the first term, played soccer with our junior and senior girls team, won a gold and a bronze rowing medal at the national championships in St. Catharines, and in her spare time, competed in track club and track, track and field, where she was outstanding with the javelin. Well done, Nairi. <laughs> And our last award winner for today, in grade nine, Casper Holen. Casper so was actually a four sport athlete at Brentwood this year. As just a grade nine, he was a leading goal scorer on our junior boys soccer team. He was a starter for the junior boys basketball team that earned our first ever berth at the provincial championships. Started for the junior boys first, fi first 15 and medaled in a number of regattas this year as well. Congratulations, Casper. I now invite the other vegetable, Mr. Felix. <laughs> hate broccoli. <laughs> I have the pleasure of um, starting our special presentation, Shinable, and whose leadership potential is coached within a positive personality. The runner-up is Mark Wheaton, and the winner is Nairi Paulus. <laughs> Not bad. I 
I get to tease Mr. Garvey a bit today. As you know, he is a soccer player. What do you think of the soccer World Cup during the knockout stages? You call him a spectator. The next award is the Brentwood Trophy for a grade 10 student with outstanding degree of selflessness, indicated by a strong desire to serve the community, the community, excuse me, and the school as a whole. The runner-up is Alejandro Gonzalez, and we have two winners this year, Holly Collis Hanford and Andrew Will. Andrew not may be a physically large person, he is a giant in terms of his classroom efforts on the ice and on the stage. Holly clearly takes after her mother in the talent department <laughs> and gets her abundant energy and enthusiasm from her dad and granddad and the combination is terrific. Well done both of you. in grade 9, sorry, excuse me, I went to grade 10. I actually got to grade 10. Uh, Mr. Garvey was my science teacher. <laughs> and I'm still recovering. <laughs> One day he brought out the Van der Graaff generator to teach us how static electricity worked. And we didn't really know what to do. <laughs> and then Stephen Pass, one of my classmates, said, does that mean we get early lunch? <laughs> uh, we didn't get early lunch. <laughs> the McKenzie Award is for the superior academic student in the junior school. In honor of David McKenzie, refounding headmaster of the College in Mill Bay, who was the headmaster here from 1961 to 1976. The runner-up is Derek Anderson, and the winner is Cavi Graywall. <laughs> Cavi is a re respected member of our Model UN team, and his academic average for the year is 97.6%. The Eaton Family Award, which is a scholarship established by Lynn Eaton, who is the chair of our board from 1996 to 2001, is for a grade 11 student or students who show integrity, initiative, and an appreciation for the opportunities provided by the Brentwood College tripartite program. The runners up this year are Caitlin Wardrop and Alex Reidner, and the winners are Caitlin Scragg and Joe Crissel. Kaylin is highly respected across her grade and across the school. She brings a humble grittiness to her life here and sets a great example for everyone. And Joe is exceptionally hardworking in the classroom. He's an outstanding photographer, a talented outdoorsman, and a very talented young man all around. Congratulations. The worst math student Garv ever taught fell down a wishing well. Garv couldn't believe it worked. <laughs> the Michael Apatowicz Memorial Award is for a male graduate who carries a courageous spirit of adventure and a strong self-belief through a wide range of interests. The runner-up is Fisher Woodbridge. And the two very worthy winners are Chris Lorian 
and called her Macintosh. I'd like to ask Bruce Tate to uh, join us on the stage to make the following presentations, please. In the words of Mr. Snow, Chris's house parent, Chris keeps calm and carries on. He works like a captain, but plays like a pirate. He is committed to excellence, cares about his friends, but most importantly, he is a true gentleman. Mr. Newfeld describes Calder as the consummate gentleman. Quiet, a, a quiet leader in every endeavor he is involved with, volunteering, be it in the house, in the outdoors program, or around the school. Two terrific young men. Well done. <laughs> the Kathleen Bryan Memorial Award is a scholarship given by Catherine Bryan, class of 1982, in loving memory of her mother, Kathleen. It is awarded to a female graduate who, in her response to Brentwood, ultimately demonstrates a respect for the feeling that close, meaningful relation, relationships form the basis for her personal growth and development. The runner-up is Sarah Coffin, and the two winners this year are Molly McPhee-Green and Shannon O'Callaghan. Molly exudes happiness. Just look at her. <laughs> you can't help but smile every time you see her. She is absolutely terrific. And Mrs. Carr described Shannon as the heartbeat of Allard House, especially amongst the junior students who she has been a role model for. A young woman of deep inner strength and the ultimate team player. Well done, both of you. Terrific work. <laughs> Well done. The George Keeley Award is a scholarship in honor of George Keeley, class of 1964, a visionary patron of the Brentwood, uh, of Brentwood College and the Bunch Center for the Performing Arts, as well as Chair Emeritus of the Vancouver Art Gallery. It is awarded to a graduate or graduates whose aesthetic sensibility inspires others. The runner-up is Scott Wheaton, and the two winners are Sally Co and Devin Walker. <laughs> Mrs. May says that Sally, when she was in grade nine, had the messiest room in the world, not Brentwood, the world. But today and throughout this year, Sally's sparkling creativity has formed the backbone of her is an Alex House captain who will be sorely missed. Devin, according to tells John Garvey's first school photograph was an etching. <laughs> they found it on a cave wall in France. And the, the Neanderthal who found it said, God, that guy looks old. <laughs> Time to retire, my friend. <laughs> the award is also a scholarship given by Dr. Manos in Father Ken Creer, the first to be officially hold in breath. And it is awarded to a graduate or graduates whose like endeavor inspires others. The runners-up are Aaron Hersand and Hansen. The two very worthy winners are Sean. Graduates Award, also a student and a graduate who, in my regard, are members of the senior club.
John Garvey loves sports. He's tried many. One day he tried water polo, but was disappointed when his horse drowned. The Callan Family Award is for a, fa uh, a male and female graduate who are loyal, buoyant, enthusiastic citizens, caring of the community, and keen to do well academically, artistically, and athletically. The runner-up is Isabel Durans, and the two winners are Maria Fustic and Ian Standish. He is house captain of Privet House, and according to Mr. Newfeld, is the best cheater at board games in the world. And Maria has been an outstanding servant of the school, helping kids, every kid at every turn, whenever the opportunity presented itself. Well done, both of you. Before I turn this over to Mr. Allpress, the final award I'm happy to present is the Bruce M. Hicks Public Service Award, and that is an award for a student or students who, through their actions, has done the most to ameliorate the conditions of disadvantaged students, excuse me, disadvantaged individuals or groups, which is based on the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The runner-up is Kevin Jiang. The two winners are Jiwon Kim and Jeremias De La Cruz III. <laughs> Jiwon is extremely passionate about many causes, most of those which help people, and she presents excellent debating skills. In the words of Mrs. Mays, she has never seen a student work so hard to help people I'm not going to miss you, Garf. Thank you, Mr. Felix. Mr. Garvey, will you do us the honor, please, of presenting these last few awards? The Peyton Trophy for the Outstanding Citizen. It's a bit like Laurel and Hardy up here with these two. <laughs> For an outstanding citizen in recognition of a strong contribution to both arts and the athletics. A very strong runners up for this award, Ciel Ababomi and Jack Hamilton Lane. The winners, Natalie Lawrence Ramirez and Toby Collis Hanford. <laughs> Toby coming to the stage first. Assistant Head Prefect Academics, awarded his arts and athletics colours, an outstanding soccer player and an accomplished debater. He's proceeding to UBC O in arts. Natalie from Tabasco, Mexico, house captain of Allied House. She holds both arts and athletics colours, of course. Co-captain of tennis, winner of the Roly Ball Shield for outstanding chorister. Proceeding to the Richard Ivey School of Business at Western University. Congratulations. Toby and Natalie. The PAL Cup for the graduate with an outstanding degree of selflessness indicated by a strong desire to serve the community and the school as a whole. Runner-up, Gwyneth Zolman. The winners, Sienna Leone, Ibrahim Sadiq. Sienna coming to the stage first from Vancouver. She's provided great leadership in her role as president of the graduating class of 2015. Proceeding to Arizona, the University of Arizona, to study fashion retailing and consumer science. Ibrahim from Brunei, a dedicated leader of our student activities committee, proceeding to the University of Calgary to study biomedical science. Thank you, Sienna and Ibrahim for your outstanding leadership and service to this school. The 
Brentonian Shield for a graduate or for graduates who have encouraged the love of scholarship through either personal attitude and achievement or assistance to others. The runner-up, Scott Wheaton. The winners, Jordan Sickerman and Kevin Dada. Kevin coming to the stage first from Grand Prairie, cover, covers, uh, carries both his academic and arts colours. Winner of the Concilium Award for Excellence in Model United Nations. His proceedings to St George's University of London, the medical school. Jordan's from Shawnigan Lake, awarded academic and arts colours. Winner of the Furbacker Ho Sculpture Prize, proceeding to the University of Waterloo to study life sciences. Both Jordan and Kevin demonstrate a genuine love of learning and willingness to assist others. Thank you both. <laughs> the Mary Brooks Lord, who shows promise, strength of character, and personality. The runners-up, Chris Lorian and Claire Ettridge. The winners, Jack Hamilton Lane and Gary Gann. Jack's from Edmonton. He holds his athletic and arts colours, captain of our ice hockey team, a member of our first 15, and winner of the Jerry Lee Award for Outstanding Achievement in Drawing and Painting, proceeding to McGill in their management program. Gary is from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, the house captain of Whittle House, awarded his academic and arts colours, a debater, an inspirational speaker and proceeding to the University of Southern California to their business school. Congratulations and thank you, Jack and Gary. <laughs> the Holmes Cup. For the graduate whose outstanding citizenship exemplifies care for the school and the wider community. The runner-up, you've just met him, Gary Gann. The winner, Andrea Denny Giles. <laughs> Andrea's from Vancouver, awarded her Arts Colours and the Morris D. Young Acting Award. Acknowledged today for her outstanding leadership of SPARC, our peer counselling group, which also focuses on community service, volunteering, and partnerships with nonprofits through fundraising and volunteer efforts. Andrea is a busy woman. Any of you who are students, of course, know that. She has amassed 186 hours of volunteer work. Astounding that a girl can do that in addition to everything she's done here. Proceeding to Quest University to study liberal arts and science. Congratulations and thank you, Andrea. <laughs> the Andrea Pennell's Cup for a graduates who exemplify empathy, compassion, and optimism as global citizens, stewards, and leaders of integrity. The runners-up, Bobby DeWitt, Benny Jean Citronbaum. The winners, Simone Henderson, Santiago Godin Gonzalez. Ladies and gentlemen, we recognize here two outstanding house captains whose empathy and optimism have been hallmarks of their leadership styles. Simone, a local girl, house captain of Mackenzie House, proceeding to UBC's Faculty of Arts. And Santiago, from Los Cabos, Mexico, house captain of Ellis House, is returning to Mexico to business school. Thank you, Simone and Santiago for your service to your school. The Bouchard Trophy for the Ducks of the school 
the leading academic student in the senior school. The runner-up, Maddie Andrews. The winner, head prefect, Tyler Pickford. Tyler's from Victoria. In addition to all his other responsibilities, he's carrying a 98.5% average in six academic grade 12 courses. He's proceeding to McGill University to their management program. Congratulations, Tyler. Eagle Bunch Cup for a graduate who displays, in addition to scholastic and artistic excellence, stability and strength of character together, together with a willingness to serve. The runner-up, quietly understated woman, but she's a powerhouse, Helen Zhang. The winner, Bryn Alexander. from the New Spay, an outstanding academic who has not only provided stability and strength of character in the, as house captain of Hope, but also through her personal commitment to dance, choreography and yearbook has provided tremendous leadership and service to Brentwood. She's proceeding to Queen's University's Faculty of Science. Thank you, Bryn, and congratulations. The William T. Ross Trophy, formerly the Appleton Trophy, for a graduate who displays outstanding leadership, stability and strength of character, together with a willingness to serve. You've met the runner-up, Andrea Denny Giles. The winner, Maddie Andrews. Maddie is from Dharan, Saudi Arabia, the immediate runner-up to the ducks of the school. She was carrying a 98% average in six courses, so clearly given tremendous leadership in the classroom and direction to our arts program through her role as assistant head prefect. She's proceeding to Queen's University's Beta International Study Centre in England to pursue, to pursue arts. Thank you, Maddie, and congratulations. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Yarrow Shield, our oldest trophy, in fact. For a graduate who displays, in addition to scholastic and athletic excellence, stability, strength of character, and a willingness to serve. The runner-up, Toby Collis Hanford. The winner, Tyler Pickford. Head Prefect Ducks awarded Colours for Arts and Athletics in addition to, to his uh, arts and athletics as well as academics, of course. In addition, he's an accomplished debater, a rugby player, and a man who's been fully committed to this tripartite program. Well done, Tyler. Thank you, Mr. Garvey. to ask the valedictorian for this year selected by his grad class to address you now, Mr. Toby Collis Hanford. students are asked, what makes Brentwood such a great school? 
and often that aforementioned question is met with another question for an answer. What makes Brownwood such a great school? I answer, has there ever been such a dedicated group of teachers in one institution? Maddie Andrews might answer, is Brentwood not even more than great because it has world-class facilities on our campus? Jordan Reimer might answer, would you like fries with that? But he, <laughs> he's a little confused, but I'm a little confused too because here I am, 18 years old, on my last day of high school, and I feel reluctant to leave. I should be euphoric and elated at the thought of leaving a school that believes wearing white socks should be treated with capital punishment, yet I am hesitant. I should be exultant that I leave behind an organization that claps so much we now have pus ridden calluses on hardened palms, yet I am trepidatious. I should be pumped like a bike tire to be free like Pip's Eagle and venture into lands beyond solely uptown, yet the school still has its talents in me. Too many teachers do I admire to simply absquatulate. Too many memories do I hold dear within these gates. And too many friends am I just not ready to say goodbye to, potentially forever. I arrived at Brentwood as a small, immature, crass boy, but I speak to you now much taller, so my first thank you goes to the cafeteria staff for tirelessly feeding me after four years here. of my claims such as the IT claiming the Wi-Fi is faster than a legless hedgehog or health center claiming that yes two tablets of ibuprofen will cure your headache broken ankle and case of malaria or even or even our headmasters claim that that giant brown B over there is not just the first of eight installments which by the fall will spell out the letters of his name Bud Patel <laughs> Instead, I wish to speak truths. I am a believer that our lives take place on a train track, and we ride aboard a train perpetually in motion, chugging any breaks or particular destination to pass through. Contrary to popular metaphor, there is no light at the end of the tunnel, because through this tunnel, it is nighttime, with no one there to guide us. We could be traveling into stuff, we could out of this void, but we're never going to be getting them out of it. So please, calm down and understand that Brentwood has cast a light on our paths. We could be lost in nothing, blindly clawing our way to university, but Brentwood has been there for us. Grit and joy are more than simple blasts of rhetoric. They serve as an example of what Brentwood has instilled in all of us. Every one of us came to Brentwood afraid of something, and now stand as conquerors in regards to that. I came to Brentwood afraid of public speaking, yet I'm here today. Jack Hamilton Lane had been afraid of art class, yet is now one of the best painters in the school. Damien McMaster came to the school petrified of swimming, and yet now he drowns in women. What? <laughs> What does this say about Brentwood as a whole? It sculpts us, it molds us, or at least encourages us to explore latent possibilities within ourselves. Brentwood has been more than a helping hand. It has been a collective body of memorable people and experiences that have furthered us all. Brentwood staff have aggrandized a maturity to the nth degree, and for that, I and the rest of the guide class, we will remain forever thankful. Last week, I walked into Mr. Patel's office and he was playing battle. He explained to me that sometimes he just likes to close his eyes and randomly point his fingers and tap things and it'll be his next move. What is that, I asked. It's, uh, it's the strategic plan, he said. And uh, although, although I make fun of him, he made my yearbook write up for in appreciation, even though we were limited to 40 characters. So parents, please feel safe and satisfied with your decision to send your children away and let them live a life here. We cannot thank our house parents enough for their guidance has been tireless and loving. The same goes for the kitchen staff and the laundry ladies, Mr. Felix, and a special nod to Mr. Garvey and Mr. Tate, as this is their final day, as it is for all of us, grad class of 2015. If I'm to cut to my real feelings, leaving the people behind at the school will be the hardest thing that I have ever done here. Best friends in grad class 2015, I'd like you to turn to each other respectively now. Isabel, look at Tristan. Molly, look at Andrea, Tia, look at Shannon, Martin, look at Reed, Evan, look at Brendan. And soak it in. If you're lucky, you will see each other again, but the next time you see each other, you might be 30. Hank Way will have delivered your baby with medical proficiency. <laughs> Kimberly Gilson will have written that book you all read to your children, and together you will have watched, on a Sunday night, Hayden Love wrestle CM Punk at WrestleMania 44. <laughs> 
Brentwood, we have had some phenomenal times together, and I, I, I actually had a dentist appointment, so I didn't go to grad weekend, but Harry's son told me it was a total blast, and I believe him, and I hope you do too, and cherish these memories we've created, because I know I will. To end this speech with a sincerely apologetic nod to the poor grad council and that grad song I royally bungled, I thank you teachers for keeping me honest, I thank you CAF for keeping me vegetarian, and I thank you grad class for the stellar times. When I am with you, there's no place I'd rather be. Study whenever. Actually, Mr. Patel's got a few more things to say, so you could be here for another hour. <laughs> no, we are almost done. Um, just a, a quick reminder to all of the uh, major award winners. You need your photograph taken down below, and then you need to return your trophies to the innovation room <laughs> so we can get them engraved. The last part of my official year is to announce the inner house winners, the inner house uh, competition winner, winners I should say. By far the closest competition we have had in many, many years. The women badly outperformed the boys, well done ladies. But as we know, the boys and girls houses are paired up. And this is a very keenly contested contest 14 events this year that started way back in September with the Eco Challenge and ended the other day with the Inner House Track and Field Meet. In fourth place, with 239 points, Privet Hope. <laughs> Third place with 240 points, just one point separating these people, these uh, teams. Third place, Rogers Allard. <laughs> the top two teams were separated by seven points only. And I've got to say that the winning houses were carried by their academic effort ratings which fed into the final tally. In second place with 248 points, I'll tell you later, <laughs> Mac Ellis. So this year's winners, with 257 points, Whittle, uh, uh, Whittle Alex, well done. said we're almost done. Passing the torch, DiMano and Mano. So I invite this year's SEC to join me. If actually if you could just assemble to the far uh, not on the stage, just on the grassy area over there. And if you line up and I'll I'll just read out the, the categories that we're gonna do. After you've celebrated and passed on the torch, please, if you could just move to the back so the next person can come up. 
And as Mr. Felix said, just a reminder at the, the new SEC and the, the old SEC to also go down to the amphitheater for a picture. So beginning in April, we invited students to apply for leadership roles for next year. Once endorsed by their house parents, the students and faculty were polled. Senior leaders, including house parents, reviewed the data and recommendations were made to my office. While not easy, after much debate and discussion, we have arrived at next year's Student Executive Committee. That is made up of head prefect, three assistant head prefects, and ex officio members from the BEAT, SAC, SPARC, grad president, and house captains. Before I announce them, I just want to say one thing at the end of this. So at the end of this ceremony, we're going to ask everyone to please stand. We'll ask the faculty and the uh, grad class to depart. And then after that takes place, uh, then, then the, the rest of the school will depart. So starting with the beat. So if I can ask the beat captains to two step forward, both of them. Beat captain for next year will be Ellie Krasny. <laughs> if I can ask the Spark captain to step up, Andrea. Spark captain for next year will be Mitali Patel. <laughs> I can ask Ibrahim to step up, please. SAC, the SAC captain for next year is Sarah Lundy. <laughs> if I can ask Sienna to step forward, please. The grad president for next year, as selected by the grade 11 class this year, is Alex Sinclair. <laughs> Now the house captains in alphabetical order. We will start with Alex House. So if Sally could step forward, please. The Alex House captain for next year is Sophia Conradi. Natalie Lawrence, if you could step forward, please. Allard House for next year. The Korea <laughs> Ellis House, if I can ask Santiago to step forward, please. Ellis House captain for 2015-16 is Daniel Pardo. <laughs> Alexander, if I can ask you to step forward. Hope House, which is moving into their new residence next year. Hope House captain for 2015-16 is Rene Lafreniere. <laughs> Mackenzie House, Simone Henderson, if you could step forward, please. Kenzie House captain for next year is Lauren Yannick. <laughs> Privet House, Ian Standish. Privet House captain for next year, Danny Hill. <laughs> Rogers House, Chris Lorian. Rogers House returns to a full boys' house next year. And the leader of that house next year will be Hezekiah. <laughs> if 
final house captain is Whittlehouse. Here again. Whittlehouse captain next year is Connor Crabtree. Now the three assistant head prefects. Firstly, Arts, Maddie Andrews. The assistant head prefect for Arts next year is Will Kenny. Yeah. The assistant head prefect for Athletics, Sean Montero, if you could step forward, please. Next year's assistant head prefect athletics is Alex Ridenour. <laughs> Academics, Toby Collis Hanford, who seems to have been on stage multiple times this afternoon. Next year's academic prefect is Tegan McNeil. Finally, Tyler Pickford, if I could ask you to step forward. The head prefect for 2015-16 is Caitlin Scrag. <laughs> I can ask the SEC just to depart stage left here, this way, go this way, that way, go that way, yes, there we go, off the stage, move that way, off the stage, congratulations. So, as they're moving across, the reminder that the major award winners again in next year's SEC to meet in the amphitheater for pictures. And please return your trophies to the Innovation Center classroom in the old academic block. And so we invite you to join us for tea in Crooks Hall following this. The last official duty that I have this afternoon and for this school year is to officially close the 2014-15 school year. To conclude the ceremony, please be upstanding for the departure of the graduating class, followed by the faculty and platform party. Thank you, and see you in September.